In this lecture, I will explain different properties of impulse signal. But before starting the properties, we will first revise unit impulse signal. And to understand unit impulse signal, I will take one signal xt. And the signal xt is having unit area. Now I will plot the waveform of signal xt. Signal xt is finite duration signal and it is having finite value between minus epsilon by 2 to epsilon by 2 this is origin and the finite value is 1 by epsilon now if you see this duration the duration for which signal value is finite you will find it is epsilon by 2 minus minus epsilon by 2 so in total we have epsilon and if you want to calculate the area of this signal you can easily calculate it the area is equal to height into width height is equal to 1 by epsilon which is the magnitude of the signal multiplied by the width which is epsilon so you can see area is equal to 1 and as area is equal to 1 signal xt is unit area signal unit area signal and we want this property to be there always associated with the signal xt this means even if you increase or decrease the duration for which signal amplitude is non-zero the total area is going to be unity now in the next case in the next case i will decrease the duration for which signal amplitude is non-zero let's decrease it and the new range is from minus epsilon by 4 to epsilon by 4 and the total duration if you calculate you will find it is epsilon by 2 so if you compare the old duration with the new duration you will find the new duration is half of the old duration now the area is equal to 1 so what will happen to the height let's try to find out the area is equal to 1 and the area is equal to height into width height let's say is h and we want to find out the height and the width is epsilon by 2 epsilon by 2 so height is simply twice of 1 by epsilon now if you compare the height with the initial height you will find the new height is two times the initial height so to maintain the area equal to unity when you decrease the duration for which the signal value is non-zero the amplitude of the signal increases so if I plot the waveform of the signal for second case it will look something like this. The new height or the magnitude of the signal is twice of 1 by epsilon and in the same way if we go on decreasing the duration the height of the signal or the magnitude increases and uh, let's say let's say the duration approaches to zero in that case the height of the signal approaches to infinity so the height or the magnitude of the signal approaches to infinity so we can define the signal xt in a different manner in which we will put the limit where epsilon is approaching to zero and when this happens in signal xt the height of the signal becomes infinity if t is equal to zero and the height of the signal becomes zero if t is something else and this signal this new signal here which we have defined for which the area is always going to be unity is known as unit impulse signal represented by delta t so this was the revision of unit impulse signal now we will try to find out the area of unit impulse signal and for that for that we will first try to find out the area of signal xt and there is nothing complicated in calculating the area of signal xt because we have already assumed the area of signal xt is always going to be 1 and to calculate the area of signal to calculate the area of signal we will integrate it from minus infinity to infinity and actually this is property number 1 property number 1 and here we will first integrate signal xt with respect to time from minus infinity to infinity and the area will be 1 
Now we are interested in calculating the area of unit impulse signal. For that we will repeat the same process. We will integrate unit impulse signal from minus infinity to infinity and as we already know unit impulse signal is equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 xt. So we will integrate limit epsilon tends to 0 signal xt dt limit epsilon tends to 0 we can take out of integration so in next step we have limit epsilon tends to 0 and inside the integration we have xt dt and from here we can say that this integration will give us result equal to 1 so finally the area of unit impulse signal the area of unit impulse signal is equal to 1 and whenever you draw the unit impulse signal whenever you draw unit impulse signal delta t you are required to represent the area also this is the form of notation and this arrow represents that the magnitude of the signal is infinity when t is equal to 0 and this one here represents that the area of the signal is equal to 1. So this is all about the property number 1. Now we will discuss the second property and in second property we will try to differentiate between unit impulse signal and normal impulse signals. What is the difference? The difference is definitely associated to the area. So let's move to property number 2 and here we will discuss what do we mean by weight or strength of an impulse let's first try to understand what is weight or strength of an impulse and for this i will take one signal y t signal y t and it is equal to a naught delta t delta t is the unit impulse signal a naught is any number and we will calculate the area of weighted impulse. The signal yt is known as weighted impulse because here we have multiplied a0 to the unit impulse signal. So we will calculate the area for which we will integrate from minus infinity to infinity. And we have signal yt equal to a0 delta t. So we have a0 delta t dt. a0 is constant. I will take it out and we are left with integration of delta t dt from minus infinity to infinity and we have already seen if you integrate or if you calculate the area the total area of unit impulse signal you will find it is equal to 1 so the area the area of signal yt you will get equal to a0 multiplied by 1 or simply a0 so area is a0 and a0 is also known as weight of impulse. So when you draw signal yt, when you draw signal yt along with this arrow which represents that the signal is having infinite magnitude when time t is equal to 0, you also require to write A0 which represents the weight of the impulse, yt is an impulse and A0 is the weight of the impulse or simply the area of the impulse. Like in case of unit impulse signal, the weight was equal to 1 or the area was equal to 1. So weight of the impulse or strength of the impulse is nothing but the area of the impulse. And this is how we can differentiate between unit impulse signal and normal impulse signals. In case of unit impulse signal, the area will be 1. But in case of normal impulse signal, the area will be something else like 2, 3, 4, etc. Now let's dive into third property. The third property is based on the second property. When you integrate, when you integrate unit impulse signal, the result you will get will be step signal. And we represent step signal by ut, unit step signal. And when you integrate an impulse signal with weight, let's say a naught, then the step signal you will get will be a naught u t. So here a naught is the weight of the impulse and here a naught is the step of the step signal. So you can see they are same. 
so weight of the impulse signal is same as the step of the step signal so this is property number three and now let's move to property number four in property number four let me write it here in property number four we will try to find out if the unit impulse signal or impulse signals are even signal or odd signal and for this we can easily use the property of even and odd signals if you see the waveform of unit impulse signal or normal impulse signals and you try to find out the mirror image about the y-axis you will find it is same this means if you have signal delta t and you perform the time reversal or you find the mirror image about the y-axis you will find the two are same and this is the property of even signals therefore therefore unit impulse or impulse simple impulse signals are even in nature so this is property number four in property number five we will try to find out if the impulse signals are energy signals power signals or any np signals we have already seen the properties of energy power and any np signals and by using those we can easily find out the nature of the impulse signal here if you see the waveform you will find when t is equal to zero the signal magnitude is infinity when t is equal to zero the magnitude of the signal is infinity and whenever this happens we say the signal is neither energy nor power signal because in case of neither energy nor power signals if at any one instance of time if the magnitude is infinity it won't have the average power finite or zero it will have the average power equal to infinity so the signal is neither energy nor power signal and this is all about property number five now let's move to property number six in which we will perform the time shifting and we will perform the time shifting on unit impulse signal the original signal is delta t and it is having the waveform like this and now we will perform the time shifting the time shifting and let's say the new signal is delta t minus t1 and as you can see we have performed the right shift by t1 the new signal will be like this the impulse which we were having at t equal to 0 is now shifted to t1 this is origin and the new signal is delta t minus t1 and don't forget to write down the weight of the signal which is 1 in this case so you can see what is the effect of time shifting on the original signal and you can use this in case of numerical problems because this is one important property now we will move to seventh property which is our last property the seventh property involves time scaling this time let's say signal is delta t or you can say signal is delta t minus 1 the time shifted signal here but for simplicity i will take delta t as our signal and we are performing time scaling time scaling and uh, let's say the new signal is delta a t so we have multiplied the time by a and here this a is not equal to zero then you will have the signal which is one over mod of a delta t so the original signal is delta t and after performing the time scaling multiplying a to the time you have one by mod a delta t to understand this i will take one example and in this example the signal is delta minus 2t and by using this result we have 1 over mod of minus 2 delta t mod of minus 2 is 2 so we have 1 over 2 delta t so this is our answer let's take another example this is example number one let's take another example which is little bit complicated as compared to the first example we already know how to deal with multiple transformations so it won't be that difficult if you remember those lectures the signal is delta minus 2t plus 3 and before you proceed you need to separate this minus 2 
because we are performing the time scaling and in that way we are multiplying the constant number to the time t not to some other constant number therefore we have minus 2 inside the bracket t minus 1.5 now we can perform the time scaling or we can directly use this result so we have a 1 over mod of minus 2 multiplied with delta t minus 1.5 or we have 1 by 2 delta t minus 1.5 so this is the answer of the second problem there are few more properties related to multiplication integration and some new terms i will not cover the remaining properties in this lecture because we also need to see the examples related to those properties and i don't want this lecture to get longer Therefore, I will end this lecture here and in the next lecture we will discuss the remaining properties.